welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I'm also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, which lies atop the traditional lands of the Atigamishing Anishinaabek people, where I live with my fiance, our two daughters, and our five cats. And this is primarily a knitting podcast. However, sometimes I talk about some of the other crafts that I'm delving into. So if this is your first time here, a big warm welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Um, yeah, and happy new year. Happy 2022, everybody. I hope that your new year has started off well and that you are all keeping safe and um, happy, healthy, and getting lots of making done. So um, let's dive right in. So first off, I just have um, a few admin things. So on December 31st, our Around the World Make Along that was being hosted over in the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast group on Ravelry wrapped up. Um, we had so many wonderful entries over the over the entire year. So we were knitting from patterns and, and yarns from around the world and each um, trimester we would switch locations. So it was really cool to see all the different all the different uh, yarns and designers and patterns being used. Uh, it was amazing. So I have drawn the final winner and the winner has been contacted and um, should be receiving their prize shortly. Just so you know, I have a little bit of notes <laughs> with me today because I had quite a bit to talk about. So if you see me looking this way, it's because I'm looking at my notes. Uh, yeah, so we also have the Marie Wallen make along happening over on Instagram. This is a year long make along and it started August 1st of last year and it will run at least until August 1st of this year. And all you have to do is make a Marie Wallen pattern. So have started it after August 1st of last year and uh, use the hashtag a year of Marie Wallen Cal over on Instagram. And we've already had several gorgeous finishes. Uh, so you might want to check out the hashtag if you're interested. And we also have a little chatter group where for the make along where we have, we have some lurkers who haven't quite crossed on yet are just drawing inspiration from all of the wonderful works in progress pictures that we're sharing. Um, everyone is so helpful. If you have any questions about how to interpret the patterns, um, or, you know, you want some advice on color choices. Yeah, everyone's just really great. I really encourage you if you're interested to to join that chatter thread. And if you're interested, just send me a DM over on Instagram and I will get you added. So that is it for admin things today. So now I'll move on to what I'm wearing. Today I am wearing my soiree, which is a pattern by Emily Foden. And I knitted out of the Knits About Winter book which is a gorgeous book, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Um, there's so many beautiful patterns in it. And I used um, two yarns from Lichen and Lace, which is a Canadian indie dyer. So I used their uh, sock yarn, which I think is an 80-20. I don't know that I wrote it down. I didn't. It's an 80-20, I believe, sock yarn. So 80% merino, 20% nylon. And then I paired that with their Marsh Mohair, with, which is like a silk, a standard silk mohair. And they're both in the colorway Beach Glass, I believe. Just double check my notes. Yeah, Beach Glass. Um, yeah, so I can't, it's really hard to show because of where I'm sitting, but you can see some of the details here. Um, it has this gorgeous cable that goes around, kind of around the shoulders. And um, there's like a honeycomb, honeycomb cabling running up the sides under the arms. It's, it's really pretty. Uh, it's a boxy fit. And um, I just, I love it. I love it. It's so soft. I just, <laughs> to be honest, I just finished washing and blocking it. Uh, it took quite a few days to dry, but um, it's softened up so much. It's just, it's lovely, lovely to wear. Highly recommend. Um, and I should say that anything that I talk about, I will leave links down below in the description. Um, to all my Ravelry pages as well as the pattern pages if you're interested in finding out more about them. And if Ravelry is not accessible to you, please do not hesitate to reach out and um, I, will, I will answer your questions. All right. Oh, I'm also wearing, you can't see them, and it'd be too hard for me to show, but I'm also wearing my Beatrix socks, which are a pair of socks that I knit last year out of Garthanor Snowdonia sock. And um, the pattern is by Sabrina Justine, 
and it is a, col a colorwork sock. I'll pop a picture in so you can see what the socks look like. Garthenor Organic Snowdonia sock does not have any nylon in it. So I was interested to see how it was going to wear. And they have, I have to say, they've been wearing beautifully. I have been wearing them almost every single day and there's no wear to them that I can, that I can see yet. And that's been going on since at least for about, um, well, even before Christmas. So at least several weeks now. And I know that doesn't seem like a lot of time, but last year I made a pair of socks out of, I, th I think it was Malabrigo sock yarn, which does not have, um, doesn't have any nylon in it. I wore them for maybe a week or two and I ended up with holes in them. So the fact that these are already lasting longer, I'm really impressed with. So I'll let you know throughout the process how, how they wear, because um, I know there's several people out there that are kind of exploring these no nylon um, sock yarns. So yeah, and that is what I'm wearing today. So now I'll move into finished objects. So obviously, since this is my first podcast episode since Christmas, I did finish up um, some gift knits, I guess, that I won't have in my possession to show you, but I, I will talk about them and pop in some pictures so you can at least see what I've, what I've finished over the past little while. So first off, I was working on a night shift, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. I was knitting this up out of Noro Silk Garden um, which is 45% silk, 45% mohair, 10% wool. And I was using three different colorways and I was using um, one particular colorway, that, the more neutral colorway as a background color and then switching between the other two colors, which, which uh, I used for the slip stitches. So um, I don't know if it's of interest to anybody, but the colorways I used were 267, 341 and 418. And I used US seven needles to knit this up. So I, I ended up, I started off, truthfully, I started off knitting this project for myself and then discovered that it was turning out a lot more colorful um, than I had anticipated, even though I, I know I chose pretty colorful yarns. <laughs> but I thought, I thought that using that neutral base would really um, kind of pare it down and in the end it just it was just too colorful for my liking but I have a friend who loves all the colors and uh, so I knew this this was going to be the perfect gift for her so I finished it up and I gifted it to her for her birthday which was right after Christmas and um, I will say I ran out of the neutral like the more neutral color for the background and had to switch right I, I don't know how many rows maybe five rows left um, and had to, to just use the colorful colors to, to kind of in between. So yeah, just a word of warning. If you try and do what I did, you'll run out of the background color most likely. But yeah, it turned out beautiful and she was really happy with it. And so yeah, that was great. It was it was a really fun knit. Mosaic knitting is is quite enjoyable and I'm really contemplating making a blanket using that kind of stitch. I think like I, I'm always trying to figure out what to do with my scrap yarns and I thought maybe like doing a scrappy blanket might be cool again holding maybe like a cream as the background color and then just using the the different you know whatever scraps um, as the slip stitches throughout I think that could be really pretty um sorry and I'll just let you know I'm filming in my basement which is where my craft room and office are and unfortunately it's also where our furnace is <laughs> so it kicks on every once in a while it's mighty cold out today I think we're in the minus minus 20 late 20s but with wind chill minus 30s kind of deal so it's quite chilly today so the furnace will be kicking on and off and I'm really sorry if that bothers you okay so next up we have a man hat which is a pattern by Haven Ashley. It's a free pattern off of Ravelry. And this is the third time that I've knit this hat uh, for my partner. And this time I knit it up out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Tweed, uh, the Sequoia Heather colorway. And uh, this was a Christmas gift knit for him. I restarted this hat, must have been at least four times trying to get the right size. So as I've said, I've knit this hat several times in the past. I used in a, previously I used an acrylic, I think it was 100% acrylic actually, I don't even think there was wool in it. 
and it was a bulky yarn. And for whatever reason, though those ones turned out great, like size wise, but, and I followed the same pattern, like same notes for this one, but for whatever reason, I could not seem to get the right size. So even though I started it over numerous times in the end, it still ended up being too small. So, I mean, it fits him, but it, <laughs> I should have taken a picture so he can fit it on. But then what happens is it slowly like starts to push up and then you end up with this like little kind of like tip at the top. It looks kind of like a gnome, <laughs> gnome hat over time. So I'm really going to have to re-knit this one. Um, it's a quick knit though. Like I held, I held the yarn double, forgot to mention that. And I used US eight needles and clearly I have to cast on more stitches than what I did. I can't remember how many I did in the end, but yeah, um, super quick knit and super cute if you get it right. <laughs> okay. So next up we have a Cucina dish towel, which is a pattern by Kathy Hammerton. I knit this up for my mom who was envious of the dish towel that I knit myself uh two years ago i think now out of and i did this one out of bernat handicrafter cotton in three colorways jute teal and overcast i used us three needles i kind of improvised the pattern a little bit it's a pretty um it's a paid for pattern so i don't want to give too much away but it is a pretty uh simple pattern uses a lot of simple stitches and um, I just kind of altered them based on the colors that I had. So I used some leftover colors, the teal and the overcast, which are the, obviously the blue and the gray, gray. I used those leftovers from my previous cotton hand towel. So I ran out <laughs> of one of the colors and had to, had to improvise the pattern, but I think it turned out okay. And um, they're, not the most fun to knit cotton, especially this type of cotton. It's not very soft in the hands and it can get, I know I'm knitting my first towel, my hands really started to ache and they, it's, it's just not as nice to knit with as wool is. It has no, uh, no stretch to it. So it's, it's not super fun, but I will say my, my dish towel is amazing and it's my absolute favorite dish towel out of like, compared to the store-bought ones. I absolutely love it and it holds up so well. And um, I think it's worth the effort. Honestly, I think I'll make myself some more in the future. Okay, and then finally, this one I do have, and I literally just finished it last night, finished seaming it together. Finally is my partner's Westerly Pullover. So again, it's kind of hard to show so I will, um, I'll pop in a picture so you can see the full, the full sweater all at once. This is a pattern by Maura Ingle. Um, long-term viewers will know that I started this project four years ago. No, over four years ago. It was in 2017 for my partner, right around the time when I first started knitting more seriously. And by seriously, I mean like knitting every day. I was so, so excited to make this sweater for him. So I, he knew I was making it. I showed him the pattern, made sure he was okay with the little um, <laughs> butterflies on it. He was, he was super excited. And I altered the colors from the originals were done in Brooklyn Tweed Loft, I think, or Shelter. Oh my goodness. I can't remember, but it's Brooklyn Tweed yarn, which is quite pricey. And it was done in blues and browns. So I switched it to greens and browns because that he loves green. John loves green. So I was so excited to make this sweater for him. I did all the, all of the gauge swatches. I can't remember how many I ended up doing, but it was quite a few because I was determined to get gauge and do things properly. I washed them. I blocked them. Like I, I did everything by the T, you know, and and then I dove in and I quickly discovered that this was not a beginner friendly sweater pattern. And this was only the, I think I made, I'm trying to remember, I think I'd only made one sweater previous to this. So this was my second sweater, my first color work sweater. And yeah, not beginner friendly. So first off, it's color work, which can be tricky. And for a larger project, probably not the best thing to start with for color work. Um, you use three colors in at some points in a row. 
it's knit flat so you have to purl color work you have to catch your floats purling um it because it's knit flat it's also seamed so you have to sew it all up at the end as well it's also knit bottom up which can come with its own problems because you can't try it on as you go <laughs> and what else um yeah it it was yeah oh it has intarsia in it as well so yeah <laughs> Needless to say, it took me for over four years to finish it, but um, I learned so many skills along the way. So not just through this sweater, but as I was progressing in my knitting. Um, so I'd put it, I put the sweater down and, you know, put it in timeout and th literally thought about ripping it out. I can't even tell you how many times because I just wasn't sure it was going to work out. And um, yeah, as I got more confident with my knitting skills and learned more techniques, um, yeah, I started picking it up and knitting on it over the years. And now it's finally done. And it culminated this past week with me learning how to properly do mattress stitch to seam this thing together. And I am so proud of it. I'm so proud of my, of my, of my seaming. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever done it. So I'm not sure like if this is, it's just, you know, this is how it looks, but I think it looks so good. You can't even tell where the seam is. Anyways, really proud of myself. Got it done. He loves it. It fits him. It has a little bit, I noticed a little bit of bunching right here. I'm not sure if I made it too too wide at the top I'm not sure there's a little bit of bunching he loves it he doesn't care he's so knit worthy so yeah anyways super pleased to have this one off my needles and uh finally finally done and I can move on from it so it was my only ancient whip and now now I have no more now we can move into works in progress uh let's see I will start with my chestnut cardigan so since I finished all of my obligation and test knits, I was finally able to turn my attention back to my Marie Wallen project. So for our Marie Wallen make along, I am making the chestnut cardigan. I will pop in a picture of what the finished cardigan looks like. Just as a reminder, I have finished the back piece. So you start with the back, it's knit bottom up. <laughs> It's also seamed, but I'm ready for that. <laughs> I now have practice. So yeah, I've knit the back piece. So you start with this. I will show you this beautiful corrugated ribbing, which I mentioned I made a mistake. This color here, this light color here is not supposed to be there, but it's okay. It's on the back. You won't notice. And then you move up to right here is the pattern repeat. So from this brown spot up, you just keep repeating for your desired length. You do some armhole shaping. There's a bit of neck, neck shaping or shoulder shaping, I should say. And then you place the um, collar stitches on, on a cable, um, presumably to do the collar later. So that's the back piece. Now I'm starting the, I believe I'm doing the left front Piece. Again, you start at the bottom. This little mushroom progress keeper shows you where I was last time I showed this on the podcast. So I did quite a bit. And where am I here? Okay, so once I get to, so I've, I have to repeat this part. Once I get to this part, then I start the shaping. So not too much longer now, and then I'll start the shaping. Yeah, it's a fun knit. Um, Color work is so addictive. Oh my goodness. So addictive. So fun. Because you just want to see like, especially when you're first starting out and you don't know what the colors are going to look like together. I mean, eventually it gets a little repetitive when you keep repeating the same pattern, but, but yeah, it's, it's really fun to see all the different colors appear. And there's so many colors in this one section. I love it. It's so pretty. So I'm using the called for yarns. I bought this as a kit last year when Marie Wallen was having a sale on her website. And oh, it's okay. Let me try and arrange this real quick. <laughs> so messy over the, over the course of me knitting. Okay. There we go. At least you can see all the colors. There we go. So there's eight colors 
and they are oh, did i say marie wallen's british breeds which is a fine blend of wool spun in devon from the blue face leicester exmoor wensleydale and zwartbull's sheep breeds it is so lovely so sheepy although it's it seems to be losing its scent or i'm just growing used to it i don't smell it as much but when i first got these yarns oh my gosh it really like i I mentioned this before I put it in my living room and my whole living room just smelled like like sheep it was and I love that smell so if you don't like that smell this yarn might not be for you it's very strong um yeah so it's beautiful to knit with um it's not cheap it's quite expensive actually and I don't I think this will probably be the one and only time I, I knit with it but I wanted to <sighs> I'm not that experienced with color work that I'm that good at swap, swapping colors and swapping things. So I wanted to stick with the original and just, I like the original. I love the colors. It's so oft autumnal. I just wasn't comfortable switching colors, but maybe in the future, I'm really looking forward to trying some other, um, other yarns like Jameson and, and Smith or Jameson of Shetland, either or. Um, yeah, there's lots of other, <laughs> much more affordable yarns out there to use for color work but yeah so that is that is that I'm making the extra large size which accommodates a 44 to 46 inch bust I have a 45 inch bust and uh yeah I'm hoping to get this done by by our deadline of August 1st but we shall see I I'm not the fastest knitter especially when it comes to color work I I can't seem to master two-handed color work so two-handed two knitting for color work so I just I just do my typical English throwing where I drop one yarn and pick up the other so it's slow going but it's okay I still enjoy it very much and and there is purling um involved purling of color work however you're only ever working with two colors in one row and I think there's only four or so rows per repeat that you have to actually catch floats which is not that much so it's really it's really quite an enjoyable knit okay so next up we have housed in this lovely ecuadorian <laughs> handmade bag that my mom brought me back from ecuador this is my florarium sweater this is a pattern by tati lutzak i will pop in a picture so you can see what it looks like and so last i showed it i think that's the progress keeper where i was possibly might have been <laughs> you start with the body um it's knit bottom up <laughs> you start with this beautiful color work actually you start with a provisional cast on first and then you do this gorgeous color work and then you knit the body for the desired length um and then you move on to the sleeves. So I've actually finished one of the sleeves. Um, so yeah, the sleeves are quite large. I don't know if I can show you. Just like widthwise, so they're like a, almost like a bell shape. And I, that doesn't bother me. I like that. The only thing is that when I cast on the sleeves for my size, did I write down which size? Size five. Um, they were way too big. Like way, way too big. So this is big enough. Uh, so because it's a, oh, how many stitches repeat? Is it eight? Eight stitches repeat, I think. So I just took out, I think I took out one repeat. Anyways, I ended up knitting the size, the arms for the size three, just to make them smaller because they were just way too large. So I've done one sleeve and I've started on the second sleeve. Not much to show here, just a bit. Oh, and similar to the body, you do a provisional cast on. I think you go back in and do a crochet border or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't read ahead. So yeah, lovely. It's really pretty and I'm knitting this out of Newtedin um, by Honor Akair, which is a Swedish unspun uh, yarn or wool. 
in two colorways. These are the two colorways. So this gorgeous dark teal. You can see there's always so many different colors in them. They never, <laughs> you can't capture them on camera, I swear. And then this beautiful gray that has like undertones of purple and teal. Yeah, so that is that. I mentioned the size, I'm using a size five. I'm using US seven needles for the color work and US fives for the non-color work. Um, my gauge, I think my gauge is on, but my, or, sorry, my stitch gauge is on, but my row gauge was slightly off. So I've had to extend the body because it was really row, row specific. It would say, you know, knit 30 rows. Um, and I would knit those 30 rows and then not be at the measurement where I should be. So I've had to extend, extend things. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. It's good. I use, you know, I'm getting used to like figuring out what I like for body length on sweaters and arm lengths and, and things like that. So it's, that's okay. I don't mind that. So that's my florarium. Okay. Next up before Christmas, I had started a Christmas stocking. So I finally decided on the four patterns that I want to make for our family's Christmas stockings. They are all by Doreen Delaney Giordano. So this one is called Uncle's Christmas Stocking, although I'm making it for my daughter, Lily. <coughs> and this is how far I've come. So you start, it's toe up. You start at the bottom with, um, I used uh, Judy's Magic Cast On for the toe. And then you obviously you're, you're doing like this puri pattern on the on the sole of the foot and then on the top you're doing this lovely Norwegian kind of star flower pattern which is so pretty and you can swap uh, borders she gives you several options for the borders at the toe and at the top you can kind of change out um, I let Lily choose which one she wanted. She wanted this little checkerboard pattern. So yeah, I'm obviously I've done the heel. Oh, it's a heel flap and gusset. I think yes. And now I'm just doing the legs. So I just have to knit for the desired length and then um, do the little border at the top. And then um, I'm going to put our names on them as well. And I think when I read ahead, there's like a how do you do that? You knit, you knit the cuff, double the length, and then you turn it inwards. So it just makes it a little more bulky and, and kind of cozy at the top. Although, I mean, like these are stockings, so you don't have to be, you know, perfect or anything. And I am catching all my floats. I'm not cheating. <laughs> Doing things the right way here. Oh, and I'm using my small circumference needles with the longer tips. So I've mentioned in the past that I had issues using nine inch circulars, the ones that are fixed. So like for socks or whatever, uh, like US ones or whatever. And I, I've discovered that it's the way that I knit. So because I use my pinky to hold on to when I'm knitting, to hold on to the needle, I need to have a longer tip to be able to grasp it. Cause if I'm trying to hold onto the cord, I end up cramping up and hurting. Like I actually put myself out of commission. At one point it hurt my wrist <laughs> and I don't want that to happen again. So now that I've discovered that it's great. And I love doing color work on small circumference needles because you don't have to worry about trying to catch, uh, trying to make sure your floats are loose enough or tight enough, whichever. Um, when you use DPNs, you know where the DPNs meet. I always found that really difficult to to make sure that you're getting the right tension there. So yeah, we're very happy with that. Oh, and I should mention the yarn. I'm knitting this up out of two colors of Briggs and Little Sport. So the plan is to knit four pairs, or not four pairs, four stockings with this Briggs and Little yarn. So I'm always going to be using this cream and then two stockings will be out of this maroon. And then the other two stockings will be out of this green heather. 
which is so pretty. I don't know if you can see, but there's like different colors in there. It's really pretty. Okay. So that's that. I don't know, honestly, I'm not putting any pressure on myself when I, I get them done when I get them done. But I will be making four stockings for us. I'm still working on Lily stocking right now, but I feel like when when spring comes, I'm definitely going to be kind of over the Christmas knits and wanting to move on to other things. But I have to show off the bag because I love it so much. I love polar bears. Um, yeah, so this is by Blue Rabbit House. And for those who don't know, I don't, I don't know how many times I've mentioned this, but not that many. I don't really talk about my job much, but I am a species at risk specialist with our provincial government here in Ontario. And so polar bears are species at risk, sadly, but I love them so much. So I had to get the polar bear bag. Okay, and now I have a few new cast-ons. So, oh, housed in this cat hair covered <laughs> project bag by Longview Creations. I like it because it has these elephants on it. Um, it are my Into the Woods socks by Melody Hoffman or B Mandarins over on Instagram. I'll see if I can show. So it's got these beautiful little trees on it, which are so cute. And I'm doing a really low contrast, obviously, color um, with my color choices. So they're knit um, cuff down. And I had started knitting them two at a time, and then I just found that the trees were a little bit fiddly, and I just I couldn't I couldn't continue that way. So I'm now. Um, I'm now knitting them one at a time. And I'm using yarn by Urso Yarn Co, which is a Canadian indie dyer. So I'm using two colors to make these socks, two different yarns. Um, the first is the, they're both by Urso Yarn Co. So this is the Mouton. It's kind of got like blue and, so it's a peach base with like blues and oatmeal and Lots of different colors in there and the colorway is called Lycorn which means unicorn in French. Um, that was Mouton. So that's 80% Dorset, 20% Nylon. Where's their yarn tip? And then the other color is again or so Yarn Co in the their Petite Face Bleu which is 80% um, untreated blue face luster, 20% nylon. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. The, the mouton, so the dorset, is much more rustic feeling, like a woolly wool. And then this one is, um, the BFL is much softer, but I love them together love them together i'm really on this like peachy kind of peachy brown kick lately lately <laughs> so yeah that's those are my into the wood socks and i'm knitting that up out on sorry on us ones i'm doing magic loop i didn't do any work on my imker socks um, so I, I didn't, I'm not bothering to show them this time around, but I really do need to get them done as well. I don't really like having more than one pair of socks on the needles at the, at a time because it takes me a long enough time to get a pair of socks done as it is. So two is just extra long. Okay. So now we'll move into my most recent cast on, which is braids of grass. And that's a pattern by Al Albina, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Albiona or Albina McLaughlin. This project or this sweater is gorgeous. I've seen, I've seen it knit up um, on, I think Cat of Heather and Hops knitted up as well as 
Becky of Back to Blady, and it's just so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. I had to cast it on. So for Christmas, my mom gifted me a sweater's quantity of this yarn, which is Katia Concept Cotton Merino. So it's a 70% cotton, 30% merino blend. And it is so soft and beautiful. And I just, I do love how the colors kind of, how it changes, I guess, because the cotton doesn't take the dye the same way that the merino does. So there's like kind of tonality to it. So pretty. And actually Magda of Magda Knits podcast just recently cast off, I think it was a salmon, salmon tunic that she knit out of this yarn in a different color, a darker, I think it was like a navy blue or a denim or something that looked so beautiful. And um, yeah, really lovely yarn. And the stitch definition is gorgeous. Okay, so I cast on braids of grass. And I will have popped in a picture of what it looks like. So it has this beautiful cabled collar neckline. Now, I am going to frog this. I've decided that after just knitting this part, which took quite a bit of time, I'm cabling without a cable needle, which I learned how to do last year when I knit my soiree. Um, so it's probably a little faster than if I was using a cable needle, but it's still taking me, it took me quite a while to make this. Um, and I don't love the, like I love the yarn, but I don't love the yarn for this project. And I think the reason why is it's too flimsy. It needs to be, I definitely think I need something more substantial, more of a rustic wool that's going to hold up. So I want, I want the collar to stand up. I don't want it to be flopped over. And I think even with blocking, it's just too drapey. That's the word I'm looking for. It's too drapey. So yeah, I've decided I am going to definitely knit this pattern, but I'm going to use Let Lopi, which is one of my absolute favorites after having knit the Telia. I'm in love with Let Lopi yarn now. So I'm definitely going to make it and I will, I'll find the right color of Let Lopi to, to knit this pattern in. So this is going to be frogged, but I wanted to show it um, because, you know, we all make mistakes. And I'm learning, I'm still learning. That's what I love so much about knitting is that I feel like I'm always learning something. So, I mean, I should have known, I should have known that it would have been too drapey. It's just not the right type of, of material for this particular type of pattern. So, so that will be frog, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. And so that is it for all of my works in progress. Um, my knitting works in progress. However, while we're, while I'm here talking about it and showing it, <laughs> I might as well show off my project bag that I made. So this is my very first sewn project. Um, when my mom was staying with us over Christmas, she, we, we got out my sewing machine um, that my grandmother had gifted to me, oh my goodness, so many years ago now. We were trying to figure out when I got it. It was definitely pre-2005. So at least 15 years ago and I had never used it. I sadly, I didn't even know how to thread it properly. Like I didn't even know. So my mom, with my mom's help, we got it all cleaned up and, and oiled up and she taught me how to thread it and then guided me on um, sewing my first project bag. And it's a, it's a drawstring project bag. I picked out the material myself. It's very, um, I believe it's William Morris got bunny, a hair, a fox, and a beautiful peacock on it. And then I did line it as well. Super fancy. I don't know if, how well this is going to show up, but the lining is this beautiful. Oh, gold with bees on it. I don't know if you can see that. I can't tell if it's showing up or not, but it's got bees all over it and it's so pretty I thought it looked really lovely so yay I did not thread I've learned that I haven't thread the, threaded the drawstring in properly so it doesn't close the way it should 
it can close this way but anyways i have to fix that and i got some new cording for it too so very proud over here learning a new craft and i come from a long line of sewists so so it's about time that i jump on that bandwagon <laughs> This won't be my last either. My mom actually kindly picked up some more material for me to make a second project bag. So that will be in the future. I'll have to do that one on my own though. So <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. Um, yeah, so really fun, really fun. Highly recommend sewing. It's so, f okay. It still took me three and a half hours to do this. Maybe longer. It was at least three and a half hours. That's, you know, from cutting out, sewing, everything, right? Learning how to thread my machine, that's everything. So it took a while, uh, but I think it's something that you become faster, obviously faster at, the more you practice it. So I don't wanna lose those skills either. I wanna, while it's fresh in my mind, I wanna keep going with it. So I'll do another project bag in the very near future. And then, uh, and then I think I might have to start looking at clothes. This is a whole nother rabbit hole I think I'm jumping into, but I'm, I'm really excited about it. The prospect of making my own wardrobe and having a completely like me made wardrobe. I think that's fantastic. So that is it. Okay, we're done with all the crafting talk. Oh, I'll have to show them next time. So I'll move on to the books. I finished two audiobooks last year. Uh, I finished a Long Walk to Water, which was a really great one. It was um, two stories about uh, a little boy and a little girl who lived in Sudan, um, war-torn country, and um, yeah, they're, how their stories kind of intertwine at the end. And it's based on a true story, which I found so remarkable. There were some tears for sure it was a beautiful story anyways and I, I highly recommend listening to it or reading it and then the other book that I listened to was the psychology of time travel a novel it was called it was pretty interesting it was about four four women who four four women who developed time travel and a time machine basically and um, there's a bit of a mystery involved someone gets murdered and who done it <laughs> or who's dead is the other question anyways yeah it was really it was a really good book it was a long one I think it was like um in listening time I think it was like eight hours or so it was a longer like one of the longer books but it was very good as well so I'm not listening to anything right now but I am reading two books so I bought this book by Sylvia Olson, which is called Unraveling Canada, A Knitting Odyssey. And I had seen an interview with Sylvia on Cabin Boy Knits podcast, who's the author. She, so she um, is a Coast Salish knitter and has studied like the Cowichan method of knitting, I guess you could say. And she wanted to go across Canada and find out if there was any other, like wh where's the oldest sweater in Canada and what basically the roots of knitting in Canada. So I haven't, I've just started it. I, it's, it's kind of like a series of anecdotes across her journey as well as stories from others. So she did a bunch of workshops along, along the way. So across the country and um, there's some stories in here from the individuals who attended the workshops too. So I, I just, I find that really intriguing because Canada's not a very old country, it, it, like relatively speaking. And I was, I've always been wondering about like the roots of knitting here and like wh wh where it came from or, you know, do we have our own unique Canadian knitting techniques, things like that. So yeah, interesting read. And then the other book that I'm reading simultaneously is um, a book that I've had. Oh my gosh, I think I've had it for 20 years and never read it. 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> it's called Simple Abundance, Day Book of Comfort and Joy. And last year I started keeping a bullet journal. I haven't been really, really great about keeping it up. However, there are times where um, I find myself gravitating to keeping a gratitude journal. 
or at least a page of like daily gratitude. And that's been really, really helpful as especially during these times, uh, the COVID pandemic times where we're all so, so isolated and it's hard. It's hard because it feels like day after day, everything's the same. We can't really do anything. So nothing changes. So I found that keeping this daily gratitude has really helped me focus on, you know, at least one thing every day that I'm grateful for. And it really helps put, put that like more optimistic, more positive um, perspective in my mind. So I found that really helpful. Now this book kind of ties into that. It's um, basically, it's a series of passages uh, for each day. So it starts January 1st and goes through the entire year. And you just read what, like they're short. I mean, they take like five minutes to read maybe. And um, they're, they're, I guess the author is trying to, you know, instill in you the fact that we can all be happy in our day-to-day -day lives. And it doesn't take more money. It doesn't take better jobs. It doesn't take more things. It doesn't, we have everything in our possession to be happy. And sometimes we forget that and we lose sight of that. And I think this book is a great reminder to just look at all the beauty around you or the individual mon mundane tasks that we are able to do or the fact that I woke up this morning and I'm alive. Like it's, it's, it sounds, it might sound a little hokey, but to me, it's, it's really helping me put into perspective, um, you know, a more positive way of being. So I just, yeah, highly recommend. Also highly recommend keeping your own gratitude journal. It really helps. Um, I know it's really helped me. So yeah. Anyways, those are the two books I'm reading. That's, do you guys do bullet journaling? Do you, do you keep a gratitude journal? I'd love to know if there are others out there. I know there are. Um, I just, I get curious. And if so, has it helped you at all? And yeah, so other than that, okay, what I've been up to, so I just yesterday uh, took a mini tr road trip to Perry Sound, which is about an hour and a half from, from me here in Sudbury, and dropped my mom off at a friend's house where she's going to be staying, and um, say goodbye. It was, yeah, we had a lovely visit with her. Um, I think she was here for six weeks or so. It was a longer visit, but it was nice. It was really, really nice spending so much time with her. So, so while she was here, um, like I said, she helped me learn how to sew. And she also helped me change the taps and drain in my, my uh, bathroom um, on our main floor. So that was quite the process. Um, I've learned I'm definitely not a plumber. <laughs> terrible at it. <laughs> I don't know. I have a, I have a, a very much a newfound respect for, for plumbers for sure. Like that, they, that is not easy work and I'm sure they make it look easy, but it's not, it, it's not easy at all. And, um, yeah, so that was, that was a good lesson. And what else did we do? We went thrifting. I'll show next time what I got. I got a few books. Um, and yeah, we both mostly just sat around and, and knit, listened to CBC and music and watched some, watched a few podcasts. I still have so many friends to catch up with. Oh my gosh, I'm so far behind on all my podcasts watching. So um, yeah, I got to get on that. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. I think we'll leave it there. I hope you're all doing well and, um, and I'll see you all in three weeks and happy making. Bye. Mm -hmm.